There's an example related to module four, which is all about creating a choice for the type of leave in your chatbot and then correlating that choice back to a SharePoint choices column. And the way to do it is to manually give some options for people that do identically correlate to the choices in your column. So go and check out that tip. But there is another option you can use and one that I actually prefer because it enables more humanistic language to be used when selecting a type of leave. Um, and it's going to use a concept called natural language. Now, it's very simple to implement. If we go into a chatbot, and we go and look at the topics. I'll pick one here. I've already built it, but I'll explain what we do. So this is the standard chatbot flow that you've built during this challenge. When do you want your holiday to start? And remember from the other tip, um, you can ask a question and the question, you can choose multiple choice as the, as the way people can respond. But what I've chosen um, down here for what sort of leave would you like? I've actually chosen a different kind of question and that icon there identifies this to me as it's going to look at what's called an entity. Now an entity is just a table. It's just a table of possible choices that somebody could use. But because entities are linked to AI, what we can actually now do is use natural language. So let me just show you how this works. So remember, this is a question and the responses will come from this leave type. If I go to entities over here, and we look at one here, I, I just created this entity. They're very easy to create. Um, you can just click new entity and start one. We see I called it leave types. Um, you can give it a good description. But the important thing here is these are the values that are in my SharePoint choices column. So I can, as long as I correlate that word sick, annual leave and unpaid, then what happens next will work beautifully. The important part here is you've got this synonyms and you can add as many synonyms for each of these entries as you want. And what that means is you can give examples where people might use a phrase to mean the term sick. So you see here I'll put feel terrible, feel ill, feel gross, poorly. You could do the same for all of these. The more you add, the better the natural language correlation will be. What's really happening here is AI behind the scenes is going to look at those phrases and go, ah, oh, they've mentioned the word terrible. That means they feel sick. So let's just go uh, and see how this works. So I'd save that, um, as you can see. Let's just wake up my chatbot. OK, when's that going to be? So let's just say Friday. Now, this is a great example of natural language. I've not actually put a date in here, but there is a dates um, entity and it's intelligent enough to know that when I put the word Friday it's a date and therefore it's going to offer up the last or the next Friday for me so I'm going to choose the, com the coming Friday when do I want it to end Monday let's choose that Monday what sort of leave so this is where I'm going to use one of those phrases I feel poorly great so what's actually happened there, let's just go and um, look at the run of that topic. So what it's done is it's taken the, uh, the leave types, my information about I feel poorly, and let's just go and have a look at what's actually been passed to the Power Automate flow. So this is the flow that ran one minute ago. We'll click into it. Let's have a look at the create an item step and see what was actually sent across. You'll see here the leave type sick was sent across to SharePoint. And that's because it's used the entity, use my words, I feel poorly, to understand that that really means it's an item of type sick. Really just nice, clever way you can create some more naturalistic interactions with your end users.